to um, describe the procedure for endotracheal intubation, standard procedure. Uh, first, we are going to over go over the uh, equipment that we use. Uh, first, what you need to know is that you need to have um, what we call body substance isolation. There are personal protective gear. This would be the mask that you're going to use. It's a face shield, so it would be placed over top of your face to uh, avoid any kind of splatter or any kind of fluids that come from the patient's mouth. We're not going to use them today for the purposes of videotaping, so just to let you know you need to have one on. It's been nice to have on a gown to protect yourself also from if the patient were to vomit or if there were some fluids that were happening or blood products. This is the bag valve mask we'll be using today. It is used for ventilation. And over here, these are our intubation equipment. You have the laryngoscope with the light. This is the laryngoscope handle, which holds the batteries and which connects to the laryngoscope blade. There are several different kinds of laryngoscopes, more than showing here, but all are for the same purpose. This one is a Macintosh number three. They all have the abbreviated name and number on them. This one is a Miller number three, which is the blade used for this video presentation. This last one is a blade with a magnifying lens to view your landmarks with. You have the syringe, which is going to inflate your endotracheal tube um, at the end, so you also want to check your equipment before you do the intubation. Usually it's about five to 10 milliliters of air, and so make sure you don't have any leaks in the end of your tube, and then you get that ready. This is the stylet that can be used to perform intubation. It is basically a guide. You do not leave it in, and you do not want it to pass. There is a little hole that's down here at the end called the eye, and you do not want it to pass farther than that. It will cause damage to the trachea. This is the uh, end tidal CO2, also called capnography, and when you attach it to the uh, bag valve mask, you can make sure that your uh, patient is breathing correctly and that you have correct tube placement, and this will secure your tube to the patient uh, so that it doesn't move or doesn't come dislodged. You can also use tape, and there are other devices out there. We are not, this is not an all-inclusive video, so there are other methods of performing intubation. So the first process you want to start out with um, is you approach the patient's head um, in this manner towards the back, and you wanna make sure that they have an open airway and make sure there's nothing in there. If there is any type of fluid for the standard procedure, you would uh, suction out their mouth and then you can perform a, the bag valve mask procedure to give them some oxygen prior to intubation. Roughly about uh, once every six seconds is how often you want to um, ventilate and give them air. And then after about 30 seconds uh, is when you know that they have been pre-oxygenated so that they will um, then be intubated. Okay, so for the standard procedure, once your patient has been um, in this position for about 30 seconds, we'll say it's been 30 seconds. Um, what you would like to do is put them in a neutral sniffing position, open up your laryngoscope, and um, you hold it in your left hand, even if you are right-handed. And when you go into the patient, into the patient's mouth, um, there are different methods to opening the mouth. You can use a scissor method to open up the mouth. So you're going to insert the laryngoscope into the mouth um, on, the, on the right side, and then you're going to move the tongue over to the left. You're going to insert in, and once you find your landmarks, which would be the glottic opening, you'll see um, the vocal cords. And once you see the vocal cords and the glottic opening lifting on the epiglottis, you insert your endotracheal tube, be careful not to um, put pressure on the teeth and be careful of their lips. So you do not want to, you do not want to rock back like this on their teeth. And then you need to inflate to just enough pressure so that the trachea is blocked off. Remove the stylet and then you attach the bag valve mask. 
Sometimes you have a ventilator that does it for you, but this is just manual ventilations. Um, once you have placed the tube, you're going to listen with your stethoscope. You will check over both um, the right and left areas of uh, the lungs. Make sure you have equal bilateral chest rise and that your breath sounds are clear. You will also check in the stomach to make sure you don't hear any gurgling because that would indicate that the tube is misplaced, that it would be um, in the esophagus and not in the trachea. You can also look for condensation in the tubing for correct placement and using the end tidal CO2 detector, which is called capnography, we can disconnect this. Usually they're computerized these days, but sometimes they still carry these out. And um, then you would secure this, like I said, with a, you can use a commercial device. Um, this will just get placed in between. And then you would just secure it like this and wrap it around so that would secure the tube into place. This is a side angle view of endotracheal intubation using the Macintosh number no. 3 blade, which is curved. The Miller is a straight blade that lifts the epiglottis, whereas the Macintosh is inserted into the space before the epiglottis called the vollecula, and the curve of the blade exposes the glottic opening and the vocal cords. With the side angle, you can see the esophagus where the tube should not be. Placement of the tube is between the vocal cords, which is not able to be visualized in this model either. Review of adult intubation. Use body substance isolation, check equipment and keep it sterile. Clear airway if necessary. Pre-oxygenate patient. Use laryngoscope to insert endotracheal tube. Watch the lips and teeth. Confirm tube placement, secure tube, and reassess patient.